Hey guys, there's so much talk about illegal immigration in America these days. I thought let's just take a deep breath and a closer look at one part of the conversation, deportations. I don't know about you, but I have an image of what it looks like to be deported in America in my mind. And so I thought to myself, well, is that really accurate? And what I found is that there's three things we should all know about deportations in the United States right now. So here it goes. Number one, what we casually call deportations, the government actually breaks down into two categories, removals and returns. A removal is an illegal immigrant who receives a court order to leave the country and is forced to do so. A return is an illegal immigrant who doesn't receive a court order but still leaves. So this could be someone turned away at the border or returned to the border to be released, which actually happened quite often during the 1990s. So it's not exactly voluntarily returning to your home country, but you never received a court order legally telling you that you had to go. These two categories are important because we tend to think about deportations probably more like removals, you know, like the movies where an agent knocks on someone's door and arrest them and then throws them out of the country. But you have to be careful if that's the only image you have in your head when you see the total number of deportations. And that leads to our second point. Looking at total deportation numbers is helpful to a point, but there are some major limitations. So let me explain. President Trump deported fewer people total than President Obama so far. And President Obama deported fewer people than President Bush during his administration. And President Bush deported fewer people than President Clinton. But they all approached illegal immigration differently. So it's actually very difficult to compare. Some administrations had higher removals. Others had higher returns. Some arrested those who crossed the border illegally. Others didn't arrest those who crossed the border illegally. Sometimes there were major changes of these policies during the administration for how these categories applied. This is one reason why some advocate for immigration reform, passing a new body of laws that could help everyone get on the same page. Big emphasis on could. It could help people get on the same page, but administrations can still choose to prioritize certain policies over others. What you should know is that both Democrats and Republicans have had control of Congress in recent years. They've had the majority of the House and the Senate and the ability to pass sweeping immigration reform. Both parties have chosen not to use that opportunity to focus on immigration. So who's the toughest on illegal immigrants in America? It really depends. And it's really tough to know the impact of deportations when we don't really know precisely how many illegal immigrants are in the country right now. The Cato Institute, though, did some very interesting analysis. What they looked at is interior removals. These are illegal immigrants living in American communities, arrested and deported. And these would be communities at least 100 miles from the border. So basically, it strips out anything related to the border, illegal border crossings, border apprehensions, and any variation that can happen year to year. So the Cato Institute said if we use often stated statistics that estimate the illegal immigrant population around 12 million people in America, the total of interior removals or deportations is less than 1% of that total illegal immigrant community. But we think we should also consider this. There's some new statistics by Yale researchers that say we could have upwards of 16 to 20 million illegal immigrants living in America right now. So if that's the case, the number of interior removals would be even less than 1%. The reality is deportation through ICE raids or ICE arrests away from the border statistically is just very, very rare. Why is that? Manpower, oversight, court backlogs, priorities of the federal government versus the local government. There's a whole host of different reasons. But here's a number you should know. ICE recently told Smarter News that more than a million people in America right now have received court order removals. More than a million people. Now, whether anyone will actually forcibly remove these people is another question entirely. Hope this made you feel a little smarter when it comes to the topic of deportation. I'm Jenna, and this is Smarter News. 